Hi, my name is Tony Dolliger. I'm a managing director at Analytics 8. There's five major areas we recommend clients focus on when trying to optimize their spend on data analytics technologies, services, and talent to balance price and performance, to optimize for that. Today, I'm going to address one of those five areas that I'll call uh, tool maturity uh, or technology maturity. In the not so distant past, the enterprise data analytics technology market was dominated by large monolithic vendors who promised they could do everything end to end for organizations data analytics needs. I think people realized that this locked in approach was predicated on those vendors being able to execute on their roadmap in a timely manner. Every year, vendors would show all the cool things they're going to do in the next year. The next year we'd show up to that conference and realize the roadmap looked eerily similar to the year before. Never mind that many of these organizations actually acquired their way to these so-called end-to-end solutions, and the pieces didn't always quit, quite fit together as nicely as, as maybe advertised on, on the architecture slides. There's a big difference between a vendor's roadmap and their actual capabilities. So with the rise of the modern data stack, the data lake house, or even like cloud uh, hyperscalers, discrete services model orientation, and, and even just other technology movements and data analytics in the last couple of years, I saw more organizations that were willing to pick and choose individual seemingly disparate technologies to build an enterprise stack more from the ground up. Uh, some might call this a best of breed approach. One problem with that approach though, is that I think it's very difficult for organizations to discern the strengths of each vendor, um, to determine where their capabilities maybe, maybe overlap with other tools that they've procured. And honestly, whether or not you've contemplated accurately what's absolutely necessary for an organization to be successful versus what's more icing on the cake. Let's face it, no two organizations are exactly the same. So if you're building a custom bottom-up disparate technology strategy, you need to surmise the answer to this fundamental question, which is, what is my minimum viable data stack? We work with enough companies at different stages of their uh, data maturity journey where we get to see recommendations of other consultancies from time to time. And what surprises me often, uh, and I'm less surprised more as time goes on, about how many technology recommendations are made uh, in a way that introduces customers to technologies too early in their data analytics journey. Um, and I get it, like recommending technology is hard to do, but the problem is, when you, when you introduce things that are not in fact in your, in your minimum viable data stack too early, you end up paying for services that you don't use right away. This was true of the big monolithic vendors. If you only use one part of their technology, but you're paying for the whole stack, that feels like a waste. The same is true for what you'd consider like more of the modern data stack or data lake house approach. If you're spending money on services you're not using, that represents a big cost savings area. And really cutting out pain for the things on your roadmap that are not adding value immediately is a great way to be able to optimize your budgets. So again, the big question is, how do you determine what your minimum viable data stack is? And for me, it always depends on the demand you have for data currently, on your current analytical maturity and your current use cases you have as an organization. If you're just focusing on batch loading of BI dashboards or standard reporting, it's gonna look wildly different than if you have teams of data scientists that are actively pushing machine learning models to production. The point is you can't just pull up a blog and say, this is my minimum viable data stack. You need to think about your organization. What is critical to data flowing end to end of your organization's analytics demand cycle and what's just nice to have, or even better yet, what's not being used at all. A great example of this, um, is sometimes we see tech stacks for organizations whose data sources don't even refresh more than once a day, having data streaming uh, services recommended, right? That's a recipe for those things sitting idle. Um, you know, if your data doesn't even support streaming today, or better yet, if your data consumers don't even have a reason to look at data at that frequency, then the answer is no, data streaming shouldn't be part of your minimum viable data stack. And it needs to be put properly on your future roadmap rather than your current stack or an implementation plan. It's a great way to save money, right? This seems really obvious and it's it's funny to have to like say this, but again, I wanna emphasize the temptation for consultancies or for organizations who are trying to build data strategies is to want to appear to be more mature than you actually are, to have 
an aspirational data stack rather than a minimum viable data stack. And ultimately, your organization's readiness to adopt the change and transformation that's going to result from technology is probably your limiting factor in terms of what you should be spending money on now. So my big takeaway for this really is to consider the timing of technology implementation if you're taking a best of breed approach to optimize your data analytics spend. Follow Analytics 8 to hear more tips like this and insights about the data analytics industry as a whole.